grace and blessings be multiplied to you, precious friend. I'm Wumi Ademola, and I am your partner in the pursuit of intimacy with God. Friend, I am super excited about the study we're going to start today because today we're going to begin to talk about my most favorite person in the entire world, and that is the Holy Spirit of God. You know, friend, as I'm talking with you right now, God the Father is seated in heaven upon his heavenly throne, and beside him, by his right hand side, is Jesus, God the Son. That's what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20. The Bible says that after God the Father had raised up the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, he gave him the honored position, the one next to God the Father on the heavenly throne. So as I'm speaking with you right now, God the Father and God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, they're seated side by side, one another, in heaven, on their heavenly throne. However, the Holy Spirit the third person in the Trinity. The Bible tells us that he is dwelling right here with us on the earth right now. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ told his disciples shortly before his crucifixion and his subsequent ascension into heaven. The Lord Jesus Christ, he told his disciples, speaking to them in John chapter 14, verses 16 through 17, which by the way, John 14, 16 through 17, is going to be our text for this entire study. So the Lord Jesus Christ, he was speaking to his disciples and he said, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Verse 17, he said, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. Listen to this, for he dwells with you and will be in you. So the Holy Spirit dwells with us right here, right now upon the earth. And that's why I call him my most favorite person in the entire earth. He is my very best friend. And he is also called the divine helper, the one that the Father sent to us to walk alongside with us in our journey of life and to help us in our Christian race. And so today we're going to begin a study that I simply titled, The Helper. The Helper being the Holy Spirit of God. Now the word helper in John 14, 16 that we just read is the Greek word that means parakletos, parakletos. And that simply means called to one side to help. And so the Lord Jesus Christ was telling the disciples and also telling us, that the Father was going to send the Holy Spirit, the third person in the Trinity, to help us, to walk side by side along with us, to help us throughout our life. And that's why the Lord Jesus Christ called him another helper. Because while Jesus was on the earth, he was walking every day with Peter, James, John, all the disciples. They were, he was walking side by side with them helping them through their tough times and their challenges and just helping them, you know, um, in their life's journey. But Jesus, as we know, has ascended back into heaven. He is seated at the right hand side of the Father, but he did not leave us alone. He did not leave us without help. He sent the Holy Spirit of God to walk alongside with us, just as real, just as, as true and as actual as the Lord Jesus Christ walked with the disciples while he walked upon the surface of the earth. And so today we're going to begin an in-depth study about our divine helper, the Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? And how does he help us? In what ways does he help us? How can we engage as well as experience his help in reality? Today, let's begin with the first question. Who is the Holy Spirit? Well, I've already inferred this in my introduction, that the Holy Spirit is God. Specifically, the Holy Spirit is the third person in the Godhead. You need to know, my friend, that the God who created the entire universe, the God who brought everything that exists into being, the uncreated one, the invisible and immortal God, he is one God who exists as three persons. He is one God existing as three persons. He is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ himself, 
attests to the reality of the Trinity. When in Matthew 28, 19, shortly before he ascended into heaven, he gave the disciples the command. He says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Then he said, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus himself, by this verse of scripture, testifies to the reality and the truth of the Trinity. God, who created the entire world, is one God, but he exists as three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Apostle Paul in his benediction to the Corinthians also confirms or attests to this truth. When he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, he says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So here we see again that God, the creator of the universe, it is stated that he exists as three persons. He's one God, not three gods. He's one God existing as three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You know, the reality of the Trinity is not something that should be debated. It's just something that should be, should be believed. It is a truth that God exists as the Trinity. And I say this, you know, not to give an exact comparison, but when you think of the fact that we human beings ourselves, we are triune in nature. We are spirits, we have souls, and we live in a human body. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, it says, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body. So right there, the scripture reveals that even human beings, we have a triune nature. Now, the fact that you um, have a spirit and have a soul and have a body doesn't mean that you're three people. No, it just means you're one, you're one person existing as three. And pretty much in the same way, just to help you understand, the God of the entire universe is one God, and he exists as three persons. And the Holy Spirit of God is the third person in the Godhead or the third person in the Trinity. So you need to understand the Holy Spirit is a person. He is not a thing. He is a real being. He is not a dove. Though on the day of Pentecost, which I'm going to talk about that later on in this study, though on the day of Pentecost he appeared um, the Bible says, when the Holy Spirit came in, tongues of fire appeared upon the disciples. Though when the Lord Jesus Christ was being baptized at, at the baptism of John, the Holy Spirit was said to have appeared as a dove, okay? And though he came as a mighty rushing wind on the day of Pentecost, that can be found in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit is not these things. The Holy Spirit manifests in these things, but he's not those things. He's not a thing. The Holy Spirit is a being. He's a personality. Just as much as God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ is a personality. He's not an impersonal force or energy, but he's a real person with whom you and I must develop a very close relationship, a close friendship, pretty much the same way that we develop a friendship with God the Father and God the Son. Remember the benediction of Paul that I read to you in 2 Corinthians 13, 14, when he said the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and then he said the communion of the Holy Spirit. That word communion means friendship. It means fellowship. And so the Holy Spirit, if he were not a real person, as much as God is a personality and, and Jesus is a personality, then Paul will not be writing in the Bible that we're to have communion. You don't commune or develop a friendship with something that is an impersonal energy or just a power or force. No, you develop a friendship with a real person. And so the Holy Spirit is a third person in the Trinity. He is God. He is a personality with whom we must be, develop a very, very close and intimate relationship with. And you know what the truth of the matter is this. You really cannot get to know God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Son, without knowing the Holy Spirit. He is actually the one who reveals the Father and the Son to us. You, he's the one that the Bible says guides us and brings us into the true and full knowledge of God. The Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter 16 
13 through 15, he said, Yet when the one I have spoken to you about comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you into everything that is true. So the Holy Spirit is the one that guides us into everything that is true. And then Jesus goes on to say, For he will not be speaking of his own accord, but exactly as he hears, and he will inform you about what is to come. He will bring glory to me. For listen to this, he will draw on my truth and reveal it to you. So the Holy Spirit is the one who draws from the truth of the Lord Jesus and reveals it to us. You cannot know the truth about Jesus without the Holy Spirit. He says he will draw my truth and reveal it to you. Whatever the Father possesses is also mine. That is why I tell you that he, the Holy Spirit, will draw on my truth and show it to you. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the Bible tells us, verses 10 through 11, that it was to us that God made known his secret by means of his spirit. So whatever secret, whatever you need to know about God can only be known by means of the Holy Spirit. He continues to say, the spirit searches everything, even the hidden depths of God's purposes. It is only our own spirit within us that knows all about us. In the same way, only God's spirit knows all about God. So only the Holy Spirit knows all about God. So you really can't know God the Father and God the Holy Spirit if you do not know, if you do not develop a friendship and a very close communion with God the Holy Spirit. And next time we're going to be talking about exactly how to develop a friendship, how to commune with the Holy Spirit. Because as you commune with the Holy Spirit, He's going to bring you into a true and a full knowledge of God the Father and God the Son. Well, I trust you're excited as I am about this new series, The Helper. So please tune in next time. In case you have not already done so, please subscribe to this YouTube channel, Knowing God Media. Hit the notification bell so that immediately the new podcast is out, you'll get notified. Until then, remain richly blessed and strong in your pursuit.